Hello drone racers, this is the Leader 120. I'm going to say, it looks kind of small. So just to start out with, we're going to start right off the bat. This is the Ishin Lizard. And you can see there, there is quite a bit of a difference. These are both X frames. I think they're both about a true X, although this looks like it might be wider than it is long. Kind of a reverse stretch X. But it is noticeably bigger and being a 120 size frame it will run three inch props i've wanted a three inch drone for a while i think it adds a lot of stability over the little 90s and 100s that we've been running hopefully this is the one often i try and get models in very first so i can be the first person to review them in this case i think i might be glad i wasn't because if you haven't seen it andy rc has done a number of reviews of this and he had a lot of problems at first and he's done some things to help get it working Working. So we're going to take a look at those. We might look at the exact commands if you have one of these for what you have to do to get it working. First, we're going to try, take a look at it, try it stock, see if I have the same problems before we make any changes. And then we'll try his changes and see if that's enough or we, if we have to do more. Unfortunately, right now, none of these micro drones are perfect out of the factory. Every one of them I've ever seen has one flaw or another. They all need some work. Maybe a year from now that'll change, but right now it just kind of seems to be the case. But right out of the box, this looks like a really clean model. After missing the first round of reviews that everybody else has got out there, Gearbest sent this one to me so I could give you my take on it and see how it compares to some of the other micros that we've got right now. It only comes as a plug and play, but it's okay because it's actually really inexpensive. At the moment on Gearbest, it's $108. And I think you can use discount codes on top of this the way it's worded here. So at a maximum, it should be $108 and maybe even better. So that's really, really good since it comes with a battery. It doesn't come with a receiver. So I've put an XM. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, and it has a decent combination of parts. Has an all-in-one camera here. It is in a printed holder, which is kind of interesting. They made it orange. So at a glance, it looks like a run cam. It, however, is not a run cam. But you know what? I wonder if a run cam would fit in there. That would make a huge difference on this. So here is a run cam mini and oh man, it is close. You might be able to wedge that in there. Now this has a built-in VTX, so you'd have to put a TX-03 on the back hanging off or something, but you might be able to get that to work if it ends up being worth it. It's really tight. It would take a little bit of work, but it might be possible. The motors are completely unmarked but they are supposed to be 1104 7500 KV motors. So that probably means this is gonna be restricted to 2S, but that might be okay for the bigger props. We'll see if it can handle 3S maybe, but it has a JST lead. Please stop using JST leads, everyone. There was a time and a place for JST, but I think this is about like a Dean's connector. Its days are done. Everything should be XT30 now. Just please just use XT30s. 20 gauge wires, which aren't bad, but if I take this off, I'll probably take the whole thing off and run 18 gauge, or maybe even better, up to an XT30. It's a four in one ESC and a built-in flight controller, so it's pretty clean, the wires. The wire soldering isn't bad. It's not too bad. So the VTX is only 25 milliwatts, so I've installed an XM receiver. It does not come with a receiver at all, and it also comes with absolutely no instructions. So there are three pads here that we'll take a look at. It is labeled on the bottom of the board. So I actually had to find this diagram, which this is the same components as the awesome Q95. This is wired much better than that was though from the factory. Everything's in the right place, which you haven't seen that review yet because it still needs some work. But this isn't about that drone, this is about this one. So I will end up zip tying the antenna on here probably does have a buzzer which is nice which is essential we'll see how loud it is it does come with a battery this was supposed to be an adc battery and that is quite clearly not adc so just so you know if you order one of these you're not getting an adc battery so i don't expect this to be a great battery i'm going to try it but i expect to have to use something better but this is what it shipped with this is the components they wanted this is what i'm going to test first I totally expect to have to make changes. But I also expect after I make a couple of changes, this is gonna be a really good drone. So if you don't mind putting a little bit of work into it, it's really inexpensive for the components that you're getting and it might end up being a really great drone. So next we need to go into beta flight and see what they have done there. Well, that was super frustrating. I've wasted hours trying to get this thing to work. Maybe one of you can tell me what's wrong. Because this is only a 25 milliwatt transmitter, I wanted to use an XM receiver. I'm a FreeSky guy. So I 
hooked it up, wired it in, and it wouldn't work. I got it connected. I finally figured out the settings, which we will go through in just a minute. But there was about a two to 30 second delay on my inputs. So I would flip the arm switch and somewhere between two and 30 seconds later, it would arm. I would move up the throttle and eventually it might start moving or it might not. And then it would be running and I'd turn it off and maybe it would stop turning the motors eventually and maybe it wouldn't. Thank goodness I never put props on. Kids, don't do this with props on. That would have been a disaster. So I thought, oh, maybe I have a bad receiver. So I tried another receiver, exact same thing. I hooked up an XM Plus just to make sure it wasn't a flight controller. That worked just fine. So I was like, okay, well maybe it's firmware. So I updated the firmware on the XM. Same thing, I've hooked the XM Plus back up and it works fine. So I have no idea what it is. If you know why the XM receiver doesn't work with this, please let me know down in the comments. For now, I've got an XM Plus, which I think is a complete waste on this model. I'm going to attempt to stay unbiased on this, even though it has thoroughly pissed me off. So here's the beta flight settings. I've not calibrated the accelerometer, which it does seem to be a little off here. I haven't calibrated an accelerometer in a long, long time. So if I need to on this, that's just not going to help my uh, bias at all any either. Ports. So those ports that I showed you on the side are UART3, at least the one I connected to. So that did take me a while to confirm. In settings, we have DSHOT 600 and motor stop. I believe that was the default. The gyro and PID loop, I'm just going to leave to make sure we don't overwhelm it because better or worse, I leave the accelerator on and it has saved me multiple times. Serial based S bus receiver, if you're like me and you're flying with the XM. VBAT is enabled and they did adjust this down, which is kind of nice. Those look like decent default settings. Current sensor, I'm pretty sure this does not have one, so there's no point, but whatever. PID tuning, holy proportional Batman, look at that P gain. Uh, that, that is the yaw at a hundred seems super high to me. Let's take a look at, there's the defaults and here's what they've set it to. So they have customized it, whether it's good or not. The super rate I think is a little low, but I'm going to leave it cause that's what they want. Even though it's going to feel weird. Receiver does work now. I did have to set this to TAER like pretty much every single time. Modes, I have arm on one, so I go down to arm. Air mode, I have on both horizon and acro mode. I have angle mode set on my default. I have disabled the buzzer because it was driving me nuts while I was trying to fix it. So we'll go ahead and rearm that. Aux three over here. There we should have a buzzer. There we go. I'll say it's a decently loud buzzer. That seems okay. The OSD seems acceptable. If there's not a lot, I prefer the 3.2 beta flight. You know, I haven't even looked to see what's on this. 315. So Omnibus 315, it's old. That's from February. Uh, it could be updated to 317 or 32, but I'm going to check it with what they shipped it on before, like I said earlier, we do a bunch of specs. So if I connect the battery now, go back to receiver. Now if I arm it. I also have motors and I have yaw and control and everything's on the right channel. Now I should be able to put props on it and do an initial flight. We'll see if it works after all of that. The battery it came with is charging. So I've got an old uh, battery I'm going to use. It's a little bit smaller and it's only a 30 C, but whoa, zippy. It's so quiet. Now I didn't put the screws in it because everybody says, Hey, you don't need to do that with these. Man, it has a really nice sound to it. It does have a little bit of a flutter. Ooh, you know, after all the frustrations I've had with it so far, which may or may not be its fault, at the moment, I, I'm kind of impressed. Let's try Horizon mode, that looks good. That look My daughter's trying to help tonight, today. See, yes. I'm gonna have to check again, because even in acro mode, it feels like air mode is enabled, which I'm not a fan of. Landing was a little tricky. You know, the camera's not bad. There we go. There's rate mode though. It's pretty smooth. There's a little prop wash coming out of it, but that's not a big deal. You know what? It has a really nice feel to it. Now I know there are some problems that people have once they give it full throttle with it. So I'm not going to test that yet. I'm just going to test some uh, floating around here, but the camera seems, seems really nice. I'm not screaming, but you know what? That's not bad. Let's not give it full throttle over by the pond so I don't end up putting it in the pond. That's not bad. I, that was full throttle. 
Now this is only a 30C battery and it's beeping at me which isn't surprising. Um, so this is their default uh, PIDs which are weird. Wow they feel weird. I need to change the PIDs. Holy cow it feels like it's all over the place. I need to go to 3.2 and uh, test that out because it totally is over responding. That, that P gain is ridiculously high and I can feel it on the yaw. That is uh, exactly what they tell you not Just right out of the box though, other than that P gain on yaw, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, it has a really nice feel to it. So compared with like the King Kong, well I couldn't do any of this with the King Kong. My video is rock solid. Um, the throttle control seems really good. The, uh, the rates are just wacky. The, or not the rates, sorry, not the rates. The uh, the PIDs though are wacky. So I'm abusing this, let's see, 6.5 volts. I, yeah, it's time to come in and land this. But let's see if my good batteries are decent batteries. I don't. All my good batteries have a XT30 connector on it. So my, none of my good batteries are really gonna work for this. Now, this is the battery that it came with. So let's take a look at my profile. And I'm on PID profile one, which was the one that they used. So I'm gonna change to PID profile two, which I believe are the Betaflight defaults. So do a save and a reboot. Now let's try it again. This is with the stock battery. So now we are not on their wacky y'all pids. I do have a little more prop vibration or a little more prop wash. Wow. Um, it's not killer on power because it's 2S, but I think it would probably handle with some changes would handle 3S just fine. But on 2S, other than the, uh, uh, yeah, there we go, look at that. A um, little bit of prop wash. It would benefit from uh, 3.2 for sure and some changes there. I'm not sure it really needs 3S though. Now let's see, the video is really good. There's full throttle and I'm not having any of the desync issues though that, uh, that everybody else was complaining about. Now I did lose video there. So the video range, it's only 25 milliwatts, and when it goes out, it goes out pretty bad. So I'm glad I got it back there. That could have been dangerous. But because I've got this XM Plus in it, I'm good. With 2S though, this is fun. Um, I, I, I like it. It's just a simple, smooth flyer that is pretty darn fast. It's way faster than the King Kongs. That is for sure. For three inch that I have wanted for a while, that, what was that? I don't know what that was. Something I shouldn't see. Probably the battery. It even flew pretty well with the battery hanging out the front. I didn't end up Velcroing it because I wanted to just try it. So uh, let's slide this back in and get a little tighter. Lots and lots of prop wash, but that can be ironed out much better than what they had. I'm just testing this though right out of the box, although I did change back to the default rates. 3.2. I want to try this next with 3.2, which I'm not going to do in this video. We'll save that for the next one. I've already spent enough time dinking with this just to get the radio working. Um, whoa, oh, 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 something's rubbing. So that was also an issue because I didn't Velcro the battery strap, which is totally my fault, not the drone's fault at all. Now I've got an obstacle to stay around. Don't fly over people. Uh, but you know what? I like this and it is definitely going to get more of my time. I have to review so many of these that I have to pick and choose which ones I spend time on. And I think this one's probably worthy. It compares most with like King Kong 110 that I had and it is night and day better than the 110 was for me. So I am very impressed so far. I have no problem at all full throttle with this, with the stock battery, with the stock connectors. I didn't change any of that. So I'm super happy and you might be too, unless you're trying to hook up an XM, which may or may not work. I expected the Leader 120 to be a total piece of garbage right out of the box, that it was gonna need a whole bunch of work and it would be amazing once I did that work, but by stock it wouldn't be good. But you know what? It was really good. It was a lot better than I expected.
I had no brownouts or desyncs or any issues like that at all through three different batteries um, that weren't even good batteries. It was just fine. I wonder if it's almost worse with the better battery. I didn't have to change the digital idle. I didn't have to change the connector. It, it just worked. It was just good. The only problem I had was with the XM receivers and I have no idea what was up with that. Really besides the XM, the biggest problem I had was the Velcro strip that it came with was ridiculously long and I had to cut it shorter because I couldn't get my battery strapped in. But that's an easy fix. Next problem is probably the 25 milliwatt transmitter. That's kind of a disappointment. 25 milliwatts for a three inch is not enough. I'd be happy with 100, I'd rather have 200, but 25 milliwatt anymore just doesn't get you far enough for as far as I would want to fly this. I would like to be able to fly it down to 200 meters, which is the extent of how far I can go. And I made it probably half of that. It doesn't have telemetry, which would be nice, but then I have to put an XSR in here, which is probably too big. Given this is, it would, this would be fine with an XM. If you can get an XM to work in this, that would be the way to go. But this thing is super duper cheap. So for the value that you get out of it, it's really nice. I would put this in the three inch class. It's not quite there, but it's quite a bit bigger than the two inches. It's the best three inch model that I've flown. If you wanna get one, the links are down below. And with some modifications, it could be an amazing beast. It's definitely in line if I have time that I will put a XT30 on it and maybe try it with 3S. It should be able to handle 3S. It's These are 7,500 if I remember right. That's awfully fast for 3S, but this thing would scream at 3S. Even with 2S, with my good batteries, it would be an even better flyer, but it did great with these just cheap batteries. If you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below with the first modification you would do this. I kind of hate starting a drone knowing I'm gonna have to make a bunch of changes to it, so you don't have to make changes to this. It was good enough range for my backyard without a problem, but what would you do, 3S, bigger battery, XT30, higher output transmitter. I don't know if this is quite big enough that I would do, go run cam mini and X or TX3 transmitter on this, but you could. It's definitely big enough that you could do that. You could get away with it. There's enough room. Until next time, remember, sometimes you just need to try it on stock and it'll work fine before you start screwing around with it.